In the NFL, not every team is good. In fact, a lot are not, honestly. Most are in a rebuild. Some teams, like the Jets and Browns, have been in rebuild for what seems like forever at this point, an attempt to brighten their future and hopefully win a Super Bowl very soon. And today, I'm going to talk about the two teams that have the brightest future in the NFL. The first team, which I had just mentioned, is the Cleveland Browns. The Dog Pound has not had a winning season since the 2007 season. In the 2016 and 2017 season, they went combined 1-31. It's pretty good if you ask me. But because of their awful record, they have gained a lot of great draft picks. 2017, 2018, and 2019 draft, they have done very well with the first pick. In the 2017 draft, they drafted defensive superstar Miles Garrett with the first overall pick. Then in the next year, they took quarterback Baker Mayfield, who seems to be their franchise quarterback. And in 2019, the Browns used their first pick to get one of the more talented receivers in the last half a decade, in Odell Beckham Jr. He may have had a bad first season with the Browns, but is going to have a comeback season this year with new coaching and Baker developing. Their first pick in that draft came in the second round when they selected Greedy Williams who did not have the greatest rookie season, but I think he has a lot of potential to be the starting cornerback opposite of Denzel Ward. And what really makes me think that they have a great future was this offseason. In the draft, they addressed many needs. With the 10th pick, they took offensive tackle Jedrick Wills Jr., who fills the void at tackle the Browns have had since Joe Thomas retired, as well as signing former Titans offensive tackle Jack Conklin. So the offensive line has seen a lot of improvement, which is the biggest weakness on the field for the Browns last season. Austin Hooper was also brought in to be the team's new starting tight end, as it seems Njoku, who is very talented in my opinion, will not pan out for the Browns and will be traded soon, I think so, or the Browns will let him walk in free agency. Hooper is a clear upgrade over David Njoku. Saying that, Hooper really is not as good as everyone makes him out to be though. He just is a great checkdown option up to 15 yards downfield, but will not produce a lot of big plays like some may have expected him to. I also want to point out a huge steal that they got in the 6th round in this year's draft in Donovan Peoples-Jones at wide receiver. I think Peoples-Jones will turn out to be a good wide receiver 3 for the team that desperately needs a consistent player in that spot of the depth chart that has been lacking for years. Him going in the 6th round isn't necessarily a surprise, but I believe he is way more talented than your average 6th round wide receiver. Switching to the defensive side of the ball, they drafted Grant Delpit in the 2nd round this season, who did tear his Achilles during training camp. But this video is not just about this upcoming season, it's about the team's future in the next couple years. I think Delpit was potentially the best safety in the class, the Browns were able to get him at pick 44, which was a huge steal. He'll be a starter for them when healthy, but in the meantime, free agent acquisition Carl Joseph, my favorite college football player of all time, will have to provide big plays for the Browns at safety without Grant Delpit. However, that is really it for meaningful defensive acquisitions this offseason, but they still do have some good defensive players. Miles Garrett, who just signed a huge extension, is clearly the best player on the team, and debatably one of the best defensive linemen in the league, and opposite him is Olivier Vernon on the D-line, who still is a good pass rusher, and is a lot younger than you may think at only 29 years old. Denzel Ward is one of the better corners in the league, and will most likely lock down your team's best receiver on a weekly basis. And for the linebackers, they did lose Joe Schobert, but now it is time for Mac Wilson to step up for the team. I think Wilson is one of the best young pieces for this defense that will end up being the voice of that side of the ball for the Browns for a very long time. To talk about the roster as a whole, they have a lot of young talent. Baker Mayfield is going to his third season after a sophomore slump that was partially his fault, but also due to Freddie Kitchens being one of the worst coaches in the league last season, so the offense was very limited. So limited that Kitchens thought it would be a good idea to run a draw on fourth down one game. Yeah. You love to see that, don't you? I think Baker will be a start in the league for years to come, with the help of the amazing offense he has around him, having one of the best wide receiver duos in Jarvis Landry and OBJ, and the best running back duo being Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. That offense will soon be top 10 to 5 in the league, and I really do not think that is even a question. With new head coach Kevin Stefanski, they'll have a lot of upside on that side of the ball, as he was very successful as the Vikings offense coordinator. On defense, Miles Garrett is the franchise cornerstone and will continue to lead a defense of himself, Denzel Ward, Mack Wilson, and many more great players to dominance in the upcoming seasons. Cleveland's 76ers-like process has done well for them, landing them multiple franchise players with top picks and free agent signings, as well as players like Nick Chubb and Mack Wilson later on in the draft. The amount of good pieces on this team makes it impossible to deny the breakout season the team will expect to see very soon, maybe even this season. Personally, I cannot wait to watch the Browns dominate on both sides of the ball and win games for the first time in almost a decade and a half. The second team I would like to talk about is the Miami Dolphins, for what I believe to be obvious reasons. First, they finally have a franchise quarterback of the future in Tua Tagovailoa, and yes, that is a Ryan Tannehill diss, and this is coming from a person whose second favorite team is the Dolphins. I believe 
Tua is the most talented quarterback of the 2020 draft class, but obviously due to injuries and one amazing season, yeah, just one season, by Joe Burrow, Tua was not the first taken off the board. By the way, I will not be saying his last name again in this video. You may notice I like to change up how I call a certain player, but I really don't want to say Tagovailoa again. So if that annoys you, good luck getting through the next couple minutes. Tua is surrounded by a multitude of young weapons like 23-year-old Preston Williams, an undrafted rookie last season who was on pace for 120 targets prior to his ACL tear, and the finally proven 27-year-old 2015 first-round pick Devontae Parker, who last season was incredible and for the first time in his five-year career, makes me feel good about that pick. In the 2019 season, Parker had 1,202 yards on 72 catches, 128 targets, and 9 touchdowns, even helping the Dolphins to a Week 70 win against the Patriots, where he torched Defensive Player of the Year Stephon Gilmore, racking in 8 catches for 137 yards. That performance was just incredible. I think Parker will prove to everyone that last season was not a one-year wonder, and Preston Williams will have a bounce-back year after the ACL tear and potentially be the team's best receiver, if not, obviously only behind Parker. The offensive player I am surprisingly most excited for is Mike Kosicki. I think Kosicki has so much potential. Last season he had 89 targets for 51 catches, 570 yards, and 5 touchdowns. A huge upgrade from his rookie season in which he only had 32 targets. I think this season he 100% will be more efficient with a similar amount of targets. Last season he had a 57.7 catch percentage, which is pretty bad, but I think that'll go up because he will finally have a reliable option at quarterback the whole season whether it is Ryan Fitzpatrick or Tua. Sorry Josh Rosen, but I've officially given up on you and your NFL career. Every weapon on the team suffered from Rosen's three starts and four played games as a Dolphin. So I think all three of those pass catchers will have at the very least more efficient seasons this year with consistent quarterback play. Or at least I think it will be consistent. I'm a believer that Tua should start day one as the best way to get better in the NFL is experience while having a mentor by your side. And the Dolphins have one of the best mentoring QBs in the league and journeyman Ryan Fitzpatrick who is an animal, I should say. I think it is easy for Tua to succeed, maybe not this season, but probably his second season at the earliest, which is the most likely scenario. Lastly, I want to talk about the offensive line for about 15 seconds. Not much to say about this unit except that it is improving and still very young. While I think that right now the offensive line is not that good, if they keep using high draft equity to get pieces on that offensive line, around first round pick offensive tackle Austin Jackson and veteran guard Eric Flowers, who is not great but definitely a starting guard in the league. It could be good soon, but probably not great anytime soon. Now, the last thing I want to get into is the running backs. Matt Breida and Jordan Howard are a good running back duo, but personally, I do not think either of them will have that great of a season due to how poor the offensive line is right now, with just a couple people that actually should be starting on the offensive line. Concluding the offense, there's a lot of young weapons to complement new franchise quarterback Tua Tago Viola, whose last name I finally just said, and this offense as a whole will just be great in the coming years. Now on to the defense. I have two players I love on this defense. The linebacker that was a captain in his second year, Jerome Baker, and mic'd up god Christian Wilkins. Jerome Baker is great. I had him on my under 25 defensive team, which was my second video ever, because I think that he is currently one of the better linebackers in the league. Last season he had 126 tackles, 3 for loss, 1 interception, and 2 forced fumbles. He's the key piece in this front 7 for the Dolphins, and he has shown no reason to believe that he is going anywhere besides up this season as now he's not the only linebacker on the team. Kyle Van Noy was signed this offseason. I think that was a great addition. However, I have one concern with Van Noy. Prior to joining the Patriots, Kyle looked bad to say the least. So maybe his breakout was just because he was in the Patriots system, like a lot of players. But this season will prove if Van Noy has what it takes to stay at a high level of play that he was at with the Patriots and be a leader for this young Dolphins core. I don't know what to think of him because like I just said, I have not seen him play at a high level besides on the Patriots, which a lot of players have done in the past. However, I think that at the very least, he'll be a great leader for the Dolphins team as a whole and help the young linebackers especially, like Baker, becoming better players as they go along in their career. Moving on to my favorite player on this defense, Christian Wilkins. He's my favorite because of his funny personality, which he has shown while mic'd up. However, that's not the only reason I like Wilkins. In his rookie season, he had 56 total tackles at defensive end in the Dolphins 3-4 scheme. While the sack numbers were disappointing as he only had 2-16 in 16 games this year, you have to believe that will go up as most pass rushers do not do great their rookie season, unless you are Nick Bosa. He's an exception. This season will potentially be career-defining for Wilkins as he will have to prove that he is worthy of the first-round capital used on him in the 2019 draft, and have at least 6-7 to seven sacks while also providing good run defense, which is necessary from defensive ends in the 3-4 scheme that the Dolphins run. Now on to potentially the most talented part of the defense, the cornerbacks, Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. 
or what I like to call potentially the best cornerback duo in the league. I don't know if you remember this, but just two seasons ago, Howard led the league in interceptions with seven while also having 12 pass deflections and being selected to the Pro Bowl. However, last season through five games, before his knee injury, he did not look as good as the year before, as the completion percentage allowed by him went up from 52.4 to 65.4. Worst of all, the pass rating allowed went up from 61.2 to 117. Yeah, uh, that's really bad. But having Byron Jones, one of the league's best corners, also some of the worst hands I've ever seen from a corner, will help him get back to his 2018 form, as he will no longer have to shadow a team's number one and can focus on taking on the team's second best receiver, which I think would be best for Howard to succeed. I do not think this duo will create a lot of turnovers, or at least interceptions, because Byron Jones cannot catch a football if his life depended on it, and Xavier Howard most likely will keep his cover on lock for the most part and will not be targeted as much. Besides turnovers, this duo will be fun to watch as they will lock down the top two receivers on every team for at least the next four years, unless a player gets traded, which is when Howard's contract ends. Besides them, the other positions on this defense could use some upgrades, except for Davon Godshaw, who is a solid run-stopping defensive tackle for the Dolphins. I don't know, I didn't really feel the need to go into detail about him, just know he's a good run-stopper. Bobby McCain is also not a bad safety. He's a starter, but I feel like he also could be upgraded, and the same with Eric Rowe, who I think is worse than Bobby McCain. But again, could be upgraded. Not much to say about those two players either. But the one position group that definitely needs an upgrade is the pass rush. As of right now, the only potential good pass rusher for the Dolphins is Christian Wilkins. But with what most likely will be a good draft pick this year, Miami can change that and add another pass rusher to the mix next offseason to help bolster the group. As a whole, the defense has some work to do, but it definitely is not horrible, with the pass rush being the weakest part of the defense and the linebackers and corners being basically tied for the strongest, or you could bait on which one's better. The Dolphins have a lot to look forward to with Tua, Parker, and the rest of the crew on the offense, and Jerome Baker, Kyle Van Noy, Byron Jones, and a lot more on that defense. Now besides those two teams, there are many other teams who have a bright future in this league, whether it's due to a young franchise quarterback like the Bengals with Joe Burrow, or a great young defense but an agent offense like the Steelers, a lot of teams will surprise people and be in contention for the Super Bowl in just a couple of years, or possibly this season. When I say this, I mean it very seriously. The Dolphins and Browns will be one of, if not the scary Super Bowl contenders in the AFC and the entire NFL very soon. With all that being said, that is it from you guys. Thank you for tuning in to Fanatic Sports. Hope you all liked the video. If you did, please subscribe and hit the like button. It only takes two seconds. Also, follow me on Instagram, at FanaticSports25, and on Twitter, at FanaticSports. Now, before I end this video, what teams do you think have the brightest future in the NFL?